What is up, lads, and welcome back to the Pez Universe Podcast, Season 2, Episode 4. It's just me and Weza tonight. We're going to get straight into it. No massive introduction. It's been a while, obviously, since we've had a podcast, so we've a lot to discuss. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of strong feelings on Pez and uh, a couple of different experiences that we're having with the game, but... As I said, I am joined by my guest, or my guest, (laughs) my co-host, my co-host extraordinaire, the better half of the Pez Universe podcast, it is Weza. What is up, man? How are you keeping? Mate, I'm good, man. I'm good. It's 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 nice to to kind of be back, and it is just the two of us. It almost feels like a a really informal dinner date. It yeah, feels man. like we're 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 assessing our, our friendship and taking it to the next level. It's there's nice. it's there's nothing good. in between us. There's no guests. No offense. <laughs> no no disrespect to any of the guests, but sometimes it's yep. nice to just kick back with your with your with your, with your first your first love. Um... Oh, bless you. Bless you. Oh, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been a while. I mean, it's been a while since me and you did a podcast, just the two of us. Yeah, so yeah, it's, been, it's, uh, it's been a good a good couple of months. It's been a good couple of months, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's been a good couple of months because we've had loads of different people on. We got Spoony, Ricky, Sepp, all kinds of weird and wonderful and colourful guests. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's been it's been it's been nice. It'll be nice to kind of dig back into it. Obviously, I've been kind of uh, kind of dipping in and out of of Pez as as I am wanting to do, and you know, I've just. As time of recording just came off the back of a of a pez stream, so now is as good a time as any to kind of get get yeah. stuck in. It's definitely a lot to discuss anyway, because like pez at the moment is kind of in a position where I don't know. I often find myself in it, or I often find my, my find the community in it every time this year. Like for the last maybe three years, I don't know if that says more about like the community or it says more about the game in its current state yeah at this time in the year where it's kind of like you know you're nearly at christmas um you know the content still hasn't kicked off it's kind of you know our people kind of you know they're playing the demo in since june um or july or august or whatever it is they're seeing content on it in june and e3 and it's it's a long year you know it's a lot of pez to be playing in a short period of time for a lot of people that play it but I want to start, and I think we are going to start tonight with, 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 with my club, because it is basically what we get asked about the whole time. We have a couple of different topics um, yeah. to get into, and we'll, we'll kind of mix and match a little bit and see where it goes. No real script as usual. Um, I am with one take Wes, as I call you, so <laughs> we'll be going straight in, um, floor or foot to the floor, but... Um, yeah, we are going to start with my club and content, and we're probably going to touch then on the pre-patch and the post-patch. So, mm-hmm. where do you want to start? I'm going to throw it open to you. Do you want to start discussing the patch, or do you want to talk about my club content, or what? Where do you want to go with it? I, th- I think we, I think it'd probably be better for us to start with the patch because I th- believe the last time that we had the uh, the pod or the last time we recorded an episode of the podcast, it was pre data pack two. Um, yeah, we had obviously we had Vernon on Vernon was and... on, yeah. And and yeah, I mean there was there was a fair bit of expectation, but there was a fair bit of uh, reservation at yeah. the same time. Um, so which team do you think has come through more reservation or? I think I think personally, looking at it, there there is still a lot of reservations yeah. out there. I think there was a there was a, I mean if it was you know which we'll touch on later, but we'll you know you you sometimes get the new manager bounce when you get a new manager installed at a club. Yep. Uh, more on that later. Um, but uh, you, it kind of felt like that. It kind of felt like a oh, it's it's kind of had some changes. And then, as time has wore on, which it tends to do, it kind of we see that when we have new versions of the game come out, we see when we have uh, new updates to things that you know you have a bit of a kind of a you know a honeymoon period where yeah, everything definitely. looks like it's changed, and then you start to kind of do stuff repeatedly, and then you start to see little things that still annoy you, or yep. some things that may still be there, and. I think there's still a little bit of reservation there. Whether that's warranted or not, of course, that's that's open to interpretation. But I think, judging from the 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 you know the the general mood, I would say there is more reservation at the moment because I think people still, whether it was lofty expectations, I think they might be expecting more from their patches. Mm. I think like one of the biggest undertones or I don't even think it's an undertone anymore I think people people are pretty mm. much just coming playing out and saying it but I think one of the biggest things I've noticed and talking about the pre-patch or pre-patch and post-patch I want to tie in the survey that we did as well a couple of weeks ago I think um, because it's very interesting to to kind of see what people are expecting and what happens when 
the patch comes out or when an update comes out or DLC comes out and people have it built up in their head what they want to see and then some people are happy, some people aren't, um, some people don't you know, ever play PES again, some people actually you know, continue to play it and love it even more so. So it is kind of like a big mix of different interpretations for what the patch needs to accomplish. But one of the things I saw was, and I think it's been all over social media, is this this fable demo build and i think that's been something we did touch on it with with Vern. Yeah, with Vern um yeah. and it was it was a good topic at the time where it was kind of like let's revisit it and have a chat about it and and see like is the demo thinking back to the demo and the demo is still playable at the moment i think there's a lot of stuff in the game that is hard to say is worse in that's you know that it was better in the demo yeah. um I think the game at the moment at its core like it's at its core obviously the the collision system at the moment is it's a joke really to be honest with you um that's putting it politely it's just you know you're getting freeze for just trailing legs um mm -hmm. I mean I I did a I did a, a clearance the other day um in my master league that I was playing and I know we're going to discuss master league later as well but I did a clearance the other day it was a, kind of like a just a, a pretty simple side side to side pass and uh, I kind of overextended took a heavy touch and then I just obviously held X to you know to to jam the ball or to jam the ball forward with a pass but um, Gary Neville I'm playing as a classic Manchester United in my Master League but Gary mm -hmm. Neville just decided to go into kind of like a slide pass but instead of him sliding and passing the ball away he actually like initiated into the animation and gave away a penalty and I was like I have it recorded and it's going to be in one of the episodes because I was like scratching my head and I was like, how am I supposed to control that that, that that's going to happen, that that yeah. animation is going to kick in at that time? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that and the collision system, I know that's not the actual collision system, but what I mean is when two players come together, I suppose, at any given time, sometimes the refs don't really know what's happening. So he usually just blows a free and then decides to give it in the craziest ways. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it's it's like, what? Where are you with the demo? Like, can we? I I just feel like we need to put this to bed. But I know people are never going to put it to bed until PES twenty twenty one comes out. Like, where are your thoughts with the demo in terms of now with the gameplay now? Um. Well, uh, it's it's been so long since I've even touched that demo. Yeah. That it's, so it's been a while ago. I remember it being fluid. I remember it being kind of like you mentioned the collisions and mm. and you know the referees and there being a, a, a great sense of physicality and i i think that some of that has been lost yeah it was a lot slower wasn't it it was a lot yeah more measured it was a I think. bit more it was a bit more uh, of a kind of a methodical nature about about the game it wasn't just um it wasn't just oh you can kind of hold a like i mentioned before you can hold a button and then you can go and tackle people there was a bit of a tactic to kind of what you were doing mm. and it wasn't like it just wasn't it, it it didn't seem to transfer yeah and for for whatever reason and you know obviously i know that that you know is a, is a great bone of contention for for some people and and you know understandably so if a, if a, you know if you you know they always come up with this claim of oh well this game is you know it's only a, a representation of of you know of of the you know it's only a representation it's not the full game and sometimes that is a bit of a cop out for for games companies. Mm. Uh, I don't think in this instance. I think it. I don't think it was. I think it was more a case of, okay, well we've we've put this out and and you know as we've mentioned before, they had to make changes due to bugs. They've had to make changes due to many different other things. And I just don't think that even though they made the changes, obviously to make the game more secure, it's then kind of had a. It's almost to the detriment of the game. And obviously that's not that's not obviously what Konami are going for. Yeah. You know, they're not trying to, you know, cause the game to be any worse or mm. any better. You know, they're not, they're, they're trying to make sure that the game is stable. Yeah. You know, I'm fairly sure that I'm fairly sure if you were to load up the game, just for an example, and you end up getting into a phantom game, a, a la FIFA 11, which I've mentioned before, if you were to get into a phantom game that didn't even exist and you lost games because of it, um, and that, and that, but that's because they've released the game exactly as it was. I'm not mm. saying that would have happened, mm. but if you'd have had that effect, imagine the level of complaint mm. and the amount of refunds that would have had to have gone out for that. You know, they they do need to make changes to it. 
And I suppose they don't know how those changes are going to impact the game until they release them out there. I mean, my my, my job outside of you know uh, you know out in the real world um, is in IT, uh, and a lot of it is to do with regards to changes. Mm. If you make a change, there's a risk that something will go right, but there's a risk that something will go wrong, and then it's whether the risk of it going right is higher than whether the risk of going wrong is. Mm. And I think they've had to make that risk-based approach. Um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing is 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 a interpretation. I just think calling for calling for you know I, I I've seen less calls for for the you know the demo the demo stuff. Yeah, I've seen less calls for it in you know in a while, and you know that I it, that is a good thing all in all because you know it's kind of asking for stuff that you couldn't get or you weren't were getting you know. You know what I mean? So mm. it's just, yeah, it's no, just a bit difficult. Mean. It's a bit difficult. Uh, I, I personally, you know, we, we, we're playing the game as it is. The game is what it is at this point. Mm. You know, that's that's as much as it's hard to like, it's hard to put it in a vacuum. You can't you can't put it in a vacuum and say, you know, like a lot of a lot of people that kind of use that argument of like, oh, the demo is so much better than this, and I'm not saying that the demo is better or was better or isn't better. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Like, but you can't yeah. just put comparisons into a vacuum um but if i was to say to people like it kind of brings us on to a good point of demo and post patch and pre patch and stuff like i think myself personally offline and i'm just strictly talking about offline if somebody wants to judge pez based on the gameplay i'm not talking about content i'm not talking about coins i'm not talking about agents i'm not talking about anything like that i'm pretty much talking about people that are saying Gameplay by gameplay by gameplay, like the core gameplay, like as I always go on about the passing, the shooting, um, you know, the tricks and everything like that. I think as of right now, from what I'm playing in Master League, I think it's one of the best actual core gameplay experiences <laughs> offline. I think it's phenomenal when it plays well. Like I've had some games in Master League where I'm literally up off my chair when I score a last minute goal and I haven't had those since Pez 2013. We were talking about it before we came on. Um, I think what's been lost in where the gameplay is at the moment, I think the tricks have been lost. I think the slowdown with the actual explosiveness of tricks um, has been lost. And I also think that the measured approach to defending has been lost online. The tricks mm. offline are still the same. You can't pull a trick off online. The AI just react to you. You'll see yeah. now when you're starting your Master League um yeah you just can't do them like it's just it's a broken kind of feature where it's like they're not encouraged to do you're better off just do two quick passes around the defender or little triangles that's just the yeah. way pez is that's its gameplay trope like it's quick passing it always has been um yeah. you know but the, i would think that the only thing that i miss from the demo and the older builds is the actual explosiveness with the skills but saying that i'm more of a like tight dribbler than an actual skiller so I don't really like doing four or five, you know, yeah, like you step like overs and, yeah. you know, like obviously some guys that play the game are extremely good skillers. And it's like that has been lost a little bit in the last year yeah. and in this year as well. Um, yeah. But I don't know what you think about that. I mean, like it is something that I've talked about it with a lot of lads. Like I know like Shales is playing a Master League, absolutely loving it. Ali is playing a Master League, loving it. I'm playing a Master League. Um I think comparing for somebody listening to this that literally just plays my club for me to make the statement that I think the gameplay is in such a good place they're probably thinking yeah. this guy is talking absolute like fucking well yeah yeah you know? I mean I mean for me it was like I mean I, I as I said I've just come off a stream there now and you know I'd had I'd had three games of playing the online challenge cup on my club and yeah. one was laggy one was middling and the other one was a little bit basically just unresponsive yeah and I was sat there for a good 10 minutes think, it, like explaining to the stream going I, d I don't understand what I'm going to do from here what am I doing like what are we actually doing and I went do you know what actually nuts to it let's go let's go and start an Aston Villa Master League nice and I th this is news flash to everybody I absolutely loved it <laughs> I played two <laughs> games I played two games uh, I was at home to Bournemouth and I was a no I was at home to West Ham and away to Bournemouth and I had two vastly different games. I had West Ham basically punting it long to Haller, and I had Bournemouth trying to play me off the park like you would expect them, high pressing, quick passing, you know, various uh, kind of combinations between Wilson and King. And I had a blast with it. You know, the, the real 
transfer data. I, I uh, as I mentioned to you previously before going on, I, you know, I was going through going. Oh, do you know what? I'll just go and sign James Madison and Leicester were like, "Yep, yeah, that'll be forty-five million pounds." But oh, sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, so hold on. You, you, sorry. Oh, okay. And it's then fixed. even when I, yeah, even when I went to look at um, uh, some of the championship players, some of like the kind of the higher-rated championship players, some of the teams were asking for like twelve, thirteen million. Mm. And I was just like, "God, okay, now you're actually going to need to scout and actually figure some stuff out." Granted, you still see the odd transfer here and there that yeah. I didn't quite agree with. Mm. But in terms of the actual pricing, I think that's kind of down for where they need it to be. Yeah. Um, but I had a blast with it. You know, seeing the cutscenes for the first time, like, you know, I was doing that little funny voiceovers with it. <laughs> um, uh, shout out to Madge because Madge caught a couple of clips for Twitch. Um, and I had a great laugh with it. And it'll be, it'll be what I'll stream now for, for, for kind of you know for for basically for the rest of this year i Mm. I can't i can't when and especially when you go and have a feel as to how responsive the gameplay is offline compared to online yeah it's ridiculous isn't it it's it's madness yeah so so for me it's like okay i know i have aspirations with you know with esports and and all these other things but ultimately my enjoyment factor is going to be found in master league yeah and and that's definitely where i want to be living with pairs at the moment because it's far more responsive it's fun to play you're getting a variance, like I say. You, I was even saying in stream, going, "Hold on, do, West Ham just are they? Uh, I am going to get a different game next game, right?" Somebody was like, "Yeah, no. We look at like West Ham, Newcastle teams like that. They will play long balls. Some teams will actually want to play off the park." Lo and behold, I went away to Bournemouth and was down in like four minutes because I tried to play it from the back and got caught. <laughs> so, so it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, "Okay, so there's actual variance in yeah. how these teams play." Which, is great yeah because obviously one of the the key the key issues uh, of master league over the last couple of years has been the ai has been repetitive mm. they've just constantly spammed the wings or they they spam something else and at least you've got a bit of a challenge now mm. no like master league is i like i'm so i'm actually so glad that you've started a master league because <laughs> like i've been waxing lyrical about it for so long even on the podcast i've you know we were talking the last one with Vern. Um, and Ricky, the last time Ricky was on as well, Ricky is obviously a massive Master League player as well. And, yeah. you know, me and Ricky would be talking, we'd be saying like, you know, the core experience there for Pez is to be had in Master League. But people kind of just play my club and they judge the game on my club. Um, yeah. I've played the most of Master League I've played ever this year, I'd say, in the last... I, as I was saying, like Pez 2013, I think was the last solid Master League I played. Now, yeah. I played hundreds of hours of Master League. I always do uh, throughout the course of the year. But I'm talking about back like when I was when I was a, a wee young fella. When I would be playing, just... like you'd be talking thousands of hours of Master League, not hundreds. Yeah. So yeah. for me to actually sit down here when I know I have work in the morning and I have to be up in six hours and be literally saying, no, I can't play one more. And then I find myself in like another yeah. match like that yeah. that that to me like is where yeah. i want to be with pez do you know what i mean yeah. i don't want coming home from work or like sitting down to play pez after a stressful day and literally wanting to break my controller because yeah. i don't feel like my club is doing it for me um yeah. and i think i'm not trying to <laughs> i sound like i'm trying to i'm recruit people like into the army well, i'm not trying to get people a sales in, pitch for yeah i'm doing a sales pitch for mass <laughs> league but I, I'm I'm like I'm so glad that you actually had those experiences because yeah you will get games in Master League that will be like fuck that was you know that was pretty pretty good. Um, well, this thing it was like it was like looking at it uh, and again it was only it was only a sporadic thing it was kind of very much for me it was like a oh well I'll just you know I'll 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 I'll, I'll give it a go and then I saw <clears throat> I saw kind of some comp- like. Granted, the, the the general kind of menu is obviously quite different, and it's a little bit kind of you know to you got to get along with it a little yeah. bit, and, and some of the some of the aspects of it are are similar, if not the same as last year. But there's enough there for me to kind of go, oh, okay, well I can put a poll out on Twitter and go like, for example, for the next type of season that I wanted to do, I go, oh, okay, so what team do you want me to take on next? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. There's, there's there's a lot more in there, and I would say if if, if for for those who are in within the the um, the, the, within the, uh, the 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 range of my voice is that if you are having a bit of a bad time with Master League, uh, sorry, a bit of a bad time with my, my club, um, Master League's there. Like, yeah. um, give it a go anyway. I, give it a try. You yeah, know? 
give it a go because I'll tell you something. Although you know the the, the speeches and, and whatnot, you might look at it and go, "Oh, this is a bit weird." Uh, I was a little bit shocked that my board at Aston Villa wanted. Me, they reckon, "Oh yeah, we you you can finish sixth." <laughs> what, what? Are you mad? <laughs> um, uh, but you know, it's it's good. You're it's, a demanded it, bunch, does Aston Villa? Then, yeah, well, they're new owners, and they, you know, what they're like. Um, but, but that's that's the that's the point of it. I would say is that if you're disillusioned with it, give it a go. Give give your own team a go, or you know, do like a I don't know, do do like a you know, do like a journey or something yeah. where you kind of go from like club to club. Just do it that way. Just have some have some fun with it because there's there's fun there to be had. And for those people that might go, oh well, playing the AI, it's not the same as playing a human. Yeah, true, it's not. But I tell you something, the AI will give you a good bloody game. They will this year anyway. <laughs> Definitely, this, this is. Year. I actually love it because there's no infuriating like like red hot pain of throwing the controller or putting your fist through the wall of like, I'm losing to a guy here that I know isn't better than me, but he's just after getting two goals. It's laggy. I can't. I can't get into this game on my club. You know what I mean? I can't. I just can't do it. And I'm playing against a guy and he's got ten featured players and. Um, I would. I would definitely. If somebody was looking to rediscover their love for Pez this year and for the actual gameplay, and if they enjoyed the demo, I would definitely recommend what we've done and go back and start a mass league and just have a bit of crack with it. That's that's basically what I would recommend. And if I if I if I have finally got you to join <laughs> the dark you've side, worked, yeah, yeah, you've 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 worked on me. Yeah, me. we've the next we've to get a couple of next other people now in the in the net as well, but um. <laughs> Moving on from that, man, right? And we're going to go back to... Well, not moving on, moving back. We're going to go back to my club. We did talk about the content because I know a lot of people will want to talk about the content and where we're at with it. And we obviously haven't done a podcast in a while. So people will be like, well, what do you think of this? It's not good enough. It's not, you know... I don't think... And I'm not going to speak for you, but I don't think either of us are over the moon happy with Kind Only Agents and, and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of just we we covered a lot of that with the, with the podcast we did last time with Vern and yeah, stuff, yeah. so yeah. we have kind of covered that in in depth. Yeah. Um, and nothing really has kind of changed. I don't think that there hasn't been any much more content added to my club or campaigns or stuff. Um, like where where do you want to where do you want to see the game go? Obviously the patches come out now, things have kind of pretty much stayed the same. Um, yeah. Some people and we'll again we'll get to that survey that we put out in the Pez Universe Twitter um, yeah. before the patch and after the patch and stuff we did a really good survey on that that was well received and a load of people answered it like what do you want to see content wise like where where, where do you want to see the game go away content this year I mean they're obviously going to not change things too much but like yeah. what what would you like to see over the Christmas period like what would you like to see when, when Pez Light comes or if it does come or whatever um well, well, traditionally over the the kind of the holiday the holiday period, we normally get like a log in. You normally get like a, yeah, the 12, twelve days, the, the twelve days of Pesmus. Yeah, or, you know, or, or like last year when it was the New Year stuff. So it was like, oh, we'll give you give you two thousand nineteen coins over the space of however many days it was, providing you logged in and did stuff. I'd quite like <clears> to see. I I would just if if there is a facility to do it rather than having weekly content I'd rather have it where it was daily daily content so, okay so like you you lock in on one day just for example and you'll get your login bonus that's fine you'll get your you know your GP or your uh, your fitness boost or your coins whichever one comes in mm. and then you'll have something flash up will go oh today's content is actually uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in <clears throat> match day either match day can be its own separate kind of baby and leave that kind of in its own cot because people will use that anyway but they could go oh, okay next 24 hours there's an online challenge cup here and you can earn rather than have it where you earn the gp earn it where you can you can take a pick out of the selection box like that type of like you know kind of the older way they, they you know like last year's one where it was if you played the agent or you played the the online cup you'd get an agent out of it rather than the gp yeah the gp thing would have been probably more tolerable had the agents still cost 10k but they don't they cost 25 mm. so you're kind of stuck a little bit yeah once you win it um for for me i think the feature players just give them a bit of time to just ease off a bit because we are getting quite a lot bombarded with them we are getting like on average you're getting four clubs a week i think it's a what four clubs a week and then it's 
uh, four clubs a week and then it's kind of you're then getting the features on top of that uh, you know i understand that some people may see that as content and 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 fair, fair enough if that's if that's what you believe content to be that's that's great but you know, I think for for people, they want replayability in their game. They mm. want something to come back to and go. Actually, we can go and we can go and do these challenge these sets of challenges, or we can go and do, uh, you know, we can go and do a particular, uh, you know, we play a particular game with a particular set of players, or a, a nationality, or something, just something to splice it up. Mm. Because I think there's kind of been a bit of a regression between versions of Pez. I know we spoke about it at length and I won't I won't hammer home the point again, but there's been just been a bit of a regression of the content and I just think that that could potentially make its way back. Yeah. You know, if it's you know the the old the old adage goes is if it, if it's easy enough to take out, it should be easy enough to put back in. Yeah. So, you know, I I think <clears throat> I think they you know they could you know even if it came to where they go Pez like they go, oh great, actually we're gonna bring back competitions uh, on the weekends, or we're going to bring, you know, we're going to bring back the legend challenges, or we're going to do something where, you know, you know it's coming, mm. you know, um, mm. something of that ilk. I just think, I think that, I think that players would be happier with a daily set of content as yeah. opposed to a weekly set. Yeah, like I think you're right. I think that's the next step that Pez needs to take. Yeah, Michael is the future, but you can't forget the past either. You know, you have to adapt and keep the past and what's important to Pez like at its core um, mm. but it's like with that like I'm like my club new players and old players it shouldn't be a thing that if you want to go on and spend 5,000 of your like savings on coins like I'm not going to turn my nose up at you if I don't want to spend that and I go on and you hammer me because you've got a really good team I mean that's your choice but yeah. the option needs to also be there for me to be able to get my enjoyment out of the game by putting in my time instead of my money and getting rewards for putting my time in rather than just, you know what I'm saying? Just for, yeah, I, I think, I think the word you're looking for is accessibility. Yeah. Uh, um, I think at the moment, uh, as we, we constantly, we, did, we, you know, we hammered the point to death and, you know, even, even me listening back to it, I think even I was probably, I, I was more animated than I probably needed to be <laughs> to make that point, which, you know, apologies to, to those who may or may not have been offended. Um, I was uh, offended. I, I oh, know you were. Uh, <laughs> we had a long chat afterwards. I, I, was, I, was, I was giving a talk to with the ref. Um, <laughs> but I think for me, I think it's a case of there just needs to be the option there to use the GP that you earn in game. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. Even even if it's a case of, and you know, you know, some people might go, but that's too much GP. Even if you turn around and went, okay, so it's either seventy nine, oh, sorry, it's either a hundred coins, which is seventy nine p or cents or euros or wherever you're from, or you go. Here's a hundred k of GP. Mm. You can at least go. Okay, so I can earn that GP. Yeah. Because I can grind my way up to it. Yeah. Because obviously, as we know, there are people out there who farm and they have systems. I've seen screenshots of people who've got millions upon millions of GP, <laughs> and they can't use them because they 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 or they at least they can use them, but they can empty out certain boxes. Um. And, and you, you you just need to have that balance. If the option was there, I don't think there would be um, as much of a response each time that there's a an agent that's released. Because mm. you know, I read you know I read the responses that go to the tweets where you know we get the agents are now live, and then it's kind of like a load of people have some very strong opinions. Yeah, of and course. It's like you know, and I'm sure that isn't lost on the people that are running social media accounts. I'm sure it's not lost on the people at Konami. Mm. But there needs to be some type of address to balance. It, I think if you gave them the option, even if you turn around in it like turn of the year, and went okay from from first of January twenty twenty, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna turn over a brand new kind of leaf, and we're gonna just have it where everything is accessible either via GP or via coins. You can make your option. Even if it was the case they went it's hundred k, I doubt anybody's gonna turn around and go. Well, well, well great. I'm, yeah. I, you know, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like it, it is, and the balance is something that me and you. That's been a constant theme. That's been in our podcast ever since be, before Pez twenty twenty came out, because we were obviously using Pez twenty nineteen as like the comparison before Pez twenty twenty. My club had even like we'd even played it. We were kind of saying the content we needs to be like this or it needs to be like that. We need more of this but less of that. We need more of this and whatever. Um. 
I do think like that the balance will be struck will be will be struck or whatever but it's just kind of keeping people interested until then um because games do go through certain periods of you know you you find like that you buy a game you're very excited for it like I I had it with Red Dead where I bought Red Dead at the start it was the best game I'd ever played I thought it was absolutely amazing mm-hmm. um you know got halfway through the story was playing online i was absolutely smashing the life out of it and then i just like realized one day that it had like got a tick layer of dust because you know not because i'm a dirty fucker but because i just hadn't played it you know what i mean it was like i just hadn't played it like and it was like why aren't i playing this game it's amazing and it was like yeah but the last time i played it it was kind of the online was really like people were just absolutely like killing me every time like i couldn't even see who was shooting me and i just wasn't enjoying it so i switched it off yeah but with Pez, I think people have a like a kind of a, a like they're just like an invisible cord like attached to them that they're like, oh, I want to walk away, but I can't because there's something that's always there that they just you have to be playing a football game. Like you just have to be playing yeah. a football game during the year. Like it's just it's too. I don't know if you've grown up playing football games, it's very hard to, oh, to walk away, yeah. you know. Yeah, to break to break a cycle is 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 incredibly kind of tough. I mean, I I found um, I found some great fun obviously with my my IRL pals who I um, who I kind of who I obviously stream with from time to time. Yeah, um, and we've been doing squads on Fortnite. <clears throat> and honestly, going back to it after the kind of season two season two started, I have had so much fun playing that game mm. because it, it's something just vastly different. It breaks the cycle of uh, or you're playing pairs or you're playing FIFA or you're you know you're stream you know you, you it breaks the cycle mm. and all of a sudden it's just vastly different mm. you know um you know I may even I may even take to streaming it at some point you know yeah. because it's just that fun yeah. and obviously having your pals along for the ride it, it kind of marries my two worlds together where yeah. I'm kind of spending time with the boys but also I'm able to kind of produce content that I actually enjoy yeah. you know producing so you know, I think I think you are quite right. I think there's that kind of area of people where they go, I want to break, I want to break the cycle, but they can't mm. do it. Or if they do it, they don't do it in a kind of a tactful way. Yeah, it's very, it's always kind of very kind of sudden. It's probably a point that I I wanted to bring up as well, and it's after kind of naturally sneaking up on us. But like, how important do you think it is to just like, like, go into self exile with games? Like, and what I mean by that for people that kind of don't understand because i know you know what i mean but like to actually just be able to switch off the ps4 if it's frustrating you instead of saying no i'm gonna play one more now it's fucking i'm not letting that fucking game annoy me like how important do you think it is to just actually switch off and play something else like for your actual mental health like where it's like why am i sitting here playing this frustrating myself like and to actually yeah. think about it like why am i actually doing it to myself yeah. <laughs> do yeah. you know what i mean yeah it, it, it's it, it was a it was a thing that I kind of I mean I discovered it through through obviously through the, through the counseling that I'd kind mm. of gone through, and it was just realizing actually I don't I don't have what when you actually sit there and analyze why you are playing something, mm. and you can't find a reason as to why you're playing it. That's when you know it's time to either stop playing it or find something else to do. Like mm. you know. I think it's I think it's massively important. I you know I I uh, I have been floating around people's twitches and been floating around people's tweet twitters and stuff, just trying to encourage people to do something different. If the game is bothering you that much, uh, and, and I know that some people might go, oh, do you know what? It's just it doesn't it doesn't bother me. I'm just saying it's like well, you know, a lot of things are said in in anger. Mm. But when they are consistently said, they're not. It's no longer just said in anger. Mm. If you're, you know, if you're consistently going, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Then you, you need to make a change. Yeah. Whether that is stopping, you know, you know, in a, in a, if, for, if, if I'm talking about myself, whether it's stopping streaming for a bit, if it's streaming a different game, mm. if it's going and doing something different, if it's spending time with loved ones, like. You can, you have the ability to do that. Mm. You have the ability to not stress yourself out. And honestly, if you give yourself, I suppose, probably a week, you'll notice the difference. I definitely did. Yeah. Because I took a two or three week kind of break from streaming whilst I was kind of setting up this kind of counseling journey. 
and I noticed the difference right away. Mm. And I noticed the difference kind of coming back and streaming stuff that I <clears throat> I wanted to stream. Yeah. You were you looking know. forward to your streams rather than, yeah. oh, fuck, like I have that. to stream it's, tonight. Yeah. I, I put out a tweet at 12 o'clock today. I was going to be streaming at 8. And it's like, yeah. oh, I can't I can't let people down and, now. Or... You know, and it's 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 like it's like you're just, you're fo- it's almost like you're, you're focusing on the wrong on the wrong thing yeah and, and that and that is where that's where gaming gets you yeah. is that if you are worried or if you are well, worries probably <clears> wrong, <throat> but if you are focusing on the wrong things mm. and you're not focused on your own happiness then it's gonna it's gonna creep up and get you yeah it is yeah. It, it's definitely like it was i had that moment and i don't really get frustrated with games as much as i used to before as i said but i had that moment with nba uh 2k20 and you know i love that series you know i love yeah, NBA yeah. games and i watch as many games as i can if i you know if i if i can and the highlights and i'm just massively i just love the, the the basketball like um and i was i was just finding myself that i was playing online quick matches and i just found myself literally getting more and more frustrated like even if i was winning games it was just like why well, am actually playing this game like you know why don't i just play a career mode or like what? Like what am I actually playing? Like why am I playing here? Like why am I sitting yeah. down playing this game? And literally, when I miss a shot, like like how the fuck did he miss that? And like getting angry and like getting tick and you know like scraping out results and then like being like oh that was absolute shit and then find myself pressing the button to go back into the matchmaking and I was yeah. like like what am I doing? Like why am I continuing to play this? So yeah. I've I haven't played it now in about like three weeks because I just had to step away from it. Um, yeah. And I found myself, I'm, you know, I'm playing, I'm, pl- I'm back playing Pez. I'm absolutely love a master league, playing the odd bit of my club. Um, I went back playing Batman, Arkham City. I think I'm on now. Um, mm-hmm. The new Shenmue came out. Like, yeah. don't even get me talk about that because that's my favorite, one of my favorite <laughs> games ever. I get well, emotional. Well, but um, we'll have to get you in arms about this on that. Yeah, he, I he never knew. He, I actually never knew he pl- he enjoyed oh, that. He, he would he would wax lyrical about that for oh a while. man we should just I'm do a, a podcast to just you can up, just yeah. yeah you can just go that <laughs> night because like i'm literally like it's it's literally like playing shimu tree right is literally like going back 20 years like time, yeah. it, like i know the game, last game came out 18 years ago or something but it's it is actually like going back in a box like or a um, time machine box or whatever yeah, yeah. um it's crazy but i've just i've just found myself like i've just found myself actually enjoying dipping in and dipping out you know playing pokemon for a half an hour before i go to bed on the switch you know playing shemu for an hour when i get home from work you know on the weekend if i've got an hour or two play a bit of pez master league you know and do my youtube and stuff and i'm just finding that i'm in a much better place than actually wanting to be good at my club and like build a brilliant team and all this and when i do play my club then if i lose i can literally just say like ah it's not my night tonight game isn't playing well or i'm shit move off like and play something yeah. else you know um well yeah i mean i think i think in some respects i think that there's there's a lot to be said for 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 peer pressure yeah um not not and it's not necessarily <clears throat> correct that people make it, other people feel bad uh, i think it's more a case that i think people sometimes think oh well i wonder what x is going to think of me if they spot if you know if i'm doing this like yeah. i've i've had people say you know and i've said this to you privately i've had people say to me oh well you're, you're streaming fifa you yeah know, you've you've got you know you're you're part of k code that means they're going to get rid of you soon and it's yeah. like well actually no that's not really how it kind of works um but thank you for your concern <laughs> like, and it's like i mean uh, but i don't even mean that in a in yeah a i know i know, way, I know but it's like it's like i appreciate your concern but the, that's not the way it kind of works yeah you know? um and and i think that I think there is that kind of stigma around it of going, oh well, I don't, I don't want to aggravate the wrong people. If I'm, if I'm playing something else, then that means that other people are then going to think that I've, I've jettisoned the game. Like I've had to do a, you know, a, a FIFA command in my chat to stop people saying, oh, well, you totally done with Pez. It's like Jesus. that. That was the preemptive strike that I had to go for before I even started streaming FIFA. Yeah. Because it was, because I knew it was going to be the first question that was across people is, oh, have you, have you given up on Pez? Is Pez, is that it with Pez? And it's like, no. I'm just literally all I am doing is just enjoying a game that I'm playing on on street on you know on stream. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. like that's that's there's nothing more to it and nothing more yeah. like there like it's. But uh, <laughs> just to close this off before we finish, a few people have asked us shout out to Spooky as well. He got in touch to get our thoughts oh, uh. on 
in real life football, it is only one story mm-hmm. that we're dominating, and it's not Ireland actually losing the other night to Denmark and crushing my dreams. But it is about Jose Mourinho joining Spurs and Poch Oof. getting the boot. So we'll have a little chat on this. Um, what do you think? What are your initial opinions of this situation? Well, I was playing. I was. I, I can give you the the. the <laughs> so I, I was. I was playing. I was playing eleven man clubs on the night that it happened. Fuck. And Pop all and I saw. heard, all I heard was our right back go. Potch has been sacked. I, <laughs> I said no, no, no. I said I know he's rumored to be go. No, 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 no. They've actually sacked him. Yeah. And I went, Crazy. Oh, the, what? Went onto Twitter and I was like, holy shit! They've got rid of Potch. That is bizarre but when you kind of sit in isolation with it in terms of when you think about when you look at actually how Spurs have been performing over the last several months I know that there's the massive highlight of they got to a Champions League final but their I think it's their away Premier League form is awful yeah I think it's like I think it's something like one win in 11 or yeah, something poor. something really 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 bad and you're not going to get to where Tottenham are now used to with that type of form. Mm. Um, I'll be surprised to see where he ends up. I don't think because I know that there's been a lot of feelers out there that um, that uh, that Bayern are interested in him. Yeah, be but good, I good for them, wouldn't he? He would be, but there are. I would say there are better. Uh, there are better because uh, I listen to a podcast called On the Continent. Um, there, it's basically the guys who uh, who do the football ramble okay. um, but they talk about European football and they were talking about Poch's next move and they the, the main guy was like yeah he might be going to Bayern and it's like yeah but Bayern have just uh, put in um, uh, their caretaker manager until the end of the season and then they're going to try and work it from there but what the higher brass there want they actually want Thomas Tuchel from uh, PSG oh really jeez that would yeah. be a strange one wouldn't it but he was their first choice. But the reason uh, you have you had Ru- you had Rummenigge and you had um, Holness, and Holness was very hot on the idea of their manager, who they just uh, he was high on the. I think he was high on uh, was it Niko Kovac? It was Niko Kovac, wasn't it? Yeah, he so was. They, yeah. He was very high on Niko Kovac. Rummenigge wasn't. Rummenigge wanted Tuchel. Now Holness has stepped down. Rummenigge is like basically there, and it's just a case of he'll probably have who he wants so there might be a slot open up I would say if you're on the betting man I would probably say he will end up at PSG that's um, crazy I'd, I, I can't see Real Madrid bringing Zidane back a second time for them Florentino Perez to boot him again no I don't think I think Zidane is safe enough at the moment I, I think, think he I wouldn't think have come back enough. unless he had and assurances I, like and I don't think that United is going to happen because one they've just obviously you know but they, they haven't they haven't sorted out the top brass upstairs for that to be sorted out. Mm, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's no direct, there's no sporting director in place. There's no kind of gap between the manager and the board. There's just, oh, sorry. There's no, there's no gap between the manager and Ed Woodward. There's just, there's just Ollie and that, that's it. Mm. You know, I know they'd briefed to say that they were going to have these people in, but they, they didn't. There was obviously the talk of Rio and, uh, I think Edwin van der Sar was muted at one point. Yeah, as well. he's after signing like, with IX now, isn't he? He's after yeah, extending his. So, yeah, it's but going to be obviously, mad. Obviously, the the main point though is obviously is obviously Jose, and it's like he looks well rested. He looks, <laughs> but that's it. Oh, he man. looks well rested, and that's the thing. It's like for how long is he going to be well rested though? Yeah. What I would say is is the the telling bit about this is more to do with the coaching staff that are brought in. Mm. So he's brought in a lot of the backroom staff from Lille. You know, Lille obviously have renovated their squad. They qualified for uh, I think they were second last year in the league. They, yeah, they were high up anyway. League. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they have a nice squad actually, Lille. Yeah, and they've renovated. They, you know, they've obviously their, their sporting director, who I think they're on about trying to get hold of as well, discovered like a Bappe, Pepe, um, uh, Martial. Mm. Like he's like he's discovered like a lot of really good young talent that have come through. So I think Spurs will be in good hands if they can get the right infrastructure in place to deal with Mourinho's demands. Whether he get what well, the telling thing will be is whether he gets trust in the transfer or whether he gets more in the transfer market than what Poch did. Yeah, because in fairness, show. they haven't spent anything like you know. In well, the that'll last... be the thing that'll that'll just prove that actually Poch 
wasn't trusted. Yeah. Um, for a rebuild job. I think personally, I think looking at it, I think it's going to be a, a very interesting time for Tottenham fans. Oh man, um, that's it's exciting! Like it is exciting because it's exciting. they it's have exciting. the players. It's not like the thing. The thing about it is that Tottenham, in fairness, when you look at it, they they they've overachieved and they've underachieved really because they've overachieved because they haven't spent anything and they haven't you know they've got to the Champions League final last year. Obviously, they were lucky to beat Ajax, and you know, obviously, they didn't beat Liverpool, but. They got to a Champions League final with having spent literally zero. Um, and they've done really well. Poch has done really well to get the best out of like certain average players. But then on the flip side of it, like they probably have the best striker in the Premier League in I, Harry Kane. I, I would make a shout he's the best number nine on the planet. But yeah, that's... well, that's a big... that's a big. Well, Lewandowski would, might have something to say about that, but, ah, yeah. you know, it, it, it is... It's a, it's a like, you're going to build a team in the morning. Like, it's a flip of a coin, really, uh, as to oh, who yeah, you'd have. Yeah. Kane, maybe Kane, Aguero, Louis, you know, that's that's who you'd be going for. Um, yeah. And Rashford, obviously, because he's a beast. But um, <laughs> uh, I'll just throw that in. But, like, you are, you are looking at that Tottenham team now in a different light, and you're thinking... Look, Ericsson is a top class player. If they can sort out his situation, if they can sort out, you know, a couple of different players. Deli Ali hasn't kicked the ball in two years, I'd say, properly. Like he's looked atrocious. You know, they have the players there. It's not like Mourinho coming into United where I think he was kind of putting plasters over gaping wounds. It was like this needs to be like, you know, full open heart surgery here, like on United. Whereas with Tottenham they actually have the pieces there that are not that far away with the actual squad he's going to inherit. Or maybe I'm just overestimating how good Tottenham are, but I think that they've got some unreal players. Like, it's... You know, I just think that they do need a fresh change, and I think Poch is a genius for what he achieved, but I think... I think Mourinho could, could be dangerous with Tottenham, like, because I think they will spend money, but at the same time, sorting out the team that they have at the moment and getting them back if you could get those boys playing like Ericsson hasn't kicked the ball in months because he's trying to go like they had the whole thing which was this your man um, just centre back what's his name he uh, was rumoured yeah Raul like or, his, uh, yeah like there's a few of them that are out of contract Danny Rose is out of contract I think soon they're all kind of like waiting they're not going to give you know they're not going to bust their balls you know what I mean they're probably looking for a big money move with a massive salary Ericsson is the same um, do you know they have the pieces there like Son is a fantastic player mm. so I think Mourinho like uh, I don't know he's going to be he's, he's going to be I dangerous think landed, like. I think he's landed on his feet definitely um, I think it's I think it I mean obviously we we, we all but heard the, Mourinho, the the now infamous Mourinho quote of going, "Oh, the greatest thing I ever did was get Man United to finish second Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. And everyone thought it was a laugh at the time. Yeah, everyone was like, "Are you having a laugh?" And he was like, "No, seriously, it's my greatest ever yeah. achievement." And you look at what Man United's kind of situation is now, and you go, "Well, geez, yeah, he did he well. Wasn't, he did well." Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, and like you said, they have a lot of raw pieces there. They also have a really good youth setup, but yeah. whether he bloods the youth is another question entirely. Yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of memes saying that you know his first start at eleven, he was going to have uh, he's going to have Matic at centre defensive midfield, <laughs> and I was like, that's quite. I, I was like creative, but you look at some of the players who are uh, who have been on the fringe there. Eric Dyer gone completely off. Yeah, the off the radar altogether. You know, um, you've got Eric Dyer, you've got, you know, Lamella kind of is a little bit... Wanyama is still there, isn't he? Wanyama, Wanyama. off the grid. Uh, Dombele really didn't find his... hasn't really found his feet yet. He's gone from uh, him, isn't he, Dombele? Isn't he gone? No, uh, no, uh, Dombele. Oh, yeah. sorry, yeah, the other the other guy, yeah. Sorry, yeah. my bad. Um, so, you're looking at those types of players to, to maybe bring themselves back up again. Um, and yeah, maybe they did kind of, you know, they have five years of the same voice. Does the does the message have the same impact? Yeah, it'll be. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's gonna be. When I saw it now, I was like, Jesus, this could actually be, like, it could go, it could go spectacularly brilliant, or it could go, it could be an absolute disaster because it's gonna be. I think Green is gonna come in. Around? Yeah, that around that got me because he was fight. He was pre. He was sacked. What was it? Mid evening. He was sacked mid evening, and by the morning, Jose was in. Photo ops done. Flag above <laughs> his head. And yeah, they knew. Was... They knew. He knew. Like he knew he was. He knew he was going to get in there. Like you know. Yeah. Um... And it was just. 
I, I you know, it, it still, it still is, you know, probably the most shocking turn of events that we've had in yeah. in some time, um, especially around football. Uh, I can't think of any managerial turnaround. Um, just to go back to to Potchus for a sec, though, I think the only thing that I would say about um, about him potentially joining Real is that when you look at what's happening at Real at the moment, they they are basically they are in transition mm. um they've got a lot of good youngsters you look at vinicius you look at rodrigo uh you look at the fact that they've still retained is you know isco services modric is on the way out asensio needs to come back from injury um you know you look at their players not to mention what you know the forgotten man who's on loan at Real sociedad who plays them this weekend uh in martin odegaard yeah beast who, he's who massively, they, he's brilliant. Like, which which they believe, or the room, if you believe the rumor mills, is that um, they're actually going to call him back from loan at the end of the season mm. rather than in two years' time. Yeah, um, he's playing well for him, isn't he? He's smashing it. Yeah, absolutely smashing it for him. And you know, I, I just, it's going to be very interesting to see where he lands. I mean, the longer he leaves it, or the longer he kind of leaves the whole like, oh, do you know, what? I'm just going to wait this out. The longer he leaves it, the the easier it's going to be for him to negotiate. Yeah. It, it's going to be so much easier, because if you're just sat there kind of going, "Oh, you're in trouble. Oh, you'd like a you'd like a somebody to come in and save your season. <laughs> oh, okay, yep, yeah, sure. I'll come in. Just pay me an absolute king's ransom, mm. and you have got a deal. Yeah. Um. You know. And I'm and I'm because he, yeah. he is. In fairness, he is. He is. He is a brilliant manager. I just think they needed to win like it, it, I think it would have been a similar thing with Klopp last year if 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 Liverpool hadn't won their Champions League um I think people I don't think people would have like I I'm not I'm not jeez I have to be careful here now with the Liverpool fans but <laughs> I'm not saying that Klopp would be sacked now that he would be in this position if yeah. Liverpool had lost the Champions League and they were struggling away from home and they weren't running away with the league or look you know they look unstoppable at the moment, but uh. things can things can drastically change because that's what happened. Klopp. What's after happening in Poch now is after what's happening is ha- happened. Klopp when he was at Dortmund, really. When you look yeah. at it, you know he well, was the top end, of the world. The he was, of, yeah. You know it was it was that that's what happened. He was after like massively overachieving with him. Was after blood and so many. German national players, you know, was playing a sexy brand of football with the with with the all the movement and you know yeah, just when brilliant when they bust out like you know it was battered Real at home yeah I remember Lewandowski just going on a mad one and they just but... didn't push through when they needed to push through you know what yeah. I mean he did that with Liverpool but Poch is kind of a player is kind of a manager that the right situation for him again like will he still be a free agent if I hope it works out for Solskjaer being a United fan because I like Solskjaer and I like the history that he has with the club but if you're looking in a season a season's time if Poch decides to take yeah. a break and wait for that job I'll put it to you this way if you if you if you removed Ollie's history and you just had him as a manager if you just looked at him solely as a manager up against Poch you'd take Poch as a manager all day long oh right? definitely yeah definitely yeah now I'd keep I Personally, if it was a thing in the morning, even if Solskjaer had never played for United or anything, I would prefer to see Solskjaer given a chance because United need to break that cycle of just getting rid of managers because, yeah. you know, but if it was a thing where it was like, look, I have two offers on the table and you're looking at next summer and I have two offers on the table um, where Poch comes to you and says, listen, United, I have two offers. Do you want me or not? I want to go to you. Like, it's going to be a very hard decision to say no to him, wouldn't it? It would be very yeah. hard to turn him down and say, "No, fuck off, we're good." Do you know we finished eight this season? We're good. Do you know it's yeah. The only the only thing I would kind of say is is the only thing that Potts was really missing from his stint at Tottenham was a trophy. Yeah. Oh, was, definitely. Was, they they were played yeah. some brilliant football, like yeah, and, and they're a really and good the team. Is, like his 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 youth de- and again, if you go back to his youth development, you know, you know, if you look how well Harry Kane, you know, Harry Kane yeah. was good when he there but harry kane kind of hit some levels like same same with some of the players that he he had christian erickson was you know i remember the days where erickson kate first came in and everyone was like what's this hype about this kid from ajax yeah and then all of a sudden now he's one of the most sought after playmakers in world football yeah and i wouldn't be surprised if he runs his contract down however i wouldn't be surprised at the same time if Mourinho somehow does a number on him and goes do you know what you might want to stay here because you could be like a club legend mm. like and, and give him that him. self 
Yeah, give him that sell. Give it because to be fair, the, the guy deserves it. He's yeah. one of the best number tens in the Premier League, and you know there's some shouts for number tens in terms of in the traditional sense, not your Lionel Messi's yeah. because you know it's not you know we 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 know there's levels, but if you've got like those particular playmakers, I'd say in terms of your top three in the Premier League in terms of number tens, you're looking at him. You're looking at De Bruyne. You're looking at David Silva. Yeah. You know, you're looking at that type of caliber, and he's in that. He's easily in that conversation. Oh, he's, uh, like he is. He is. So, like I, I remember watching. No, he didn't do much against Ireland against Denmark the other night, um, or against Ireland the other, the other that, night. Did Did you guys have John O'Shea at the back? No, we've moved on from him. <laughs> we actually played. We actually played. I was actually the the best performance I've seen in about ten years from Ireland. They were. Brilliant. They just had no killer instinct up front, but that's another day's story, right? Don't don't open <laughs> that wound again. But um, yeah. But like I was watching him the other night, like, and he he had a he had a poor game, you know, compared to like Ireland played very well. They kind of kept him, you know, we'd 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 a man on him kind of all the time. But in the first in the first when we played Denmark last year, he was just he was just different class. Like he just ripped them apart. Like there was nothing they could do. It was just that moment of magic, but that was when he was firing on all cylinders. And I don't think he's been happy at Tottenham for whatever reason for the last, I don't know how long, but if you, if Mourinho could get him back onto, you know, best top 10 midfielder in the Premier League and have Harry Kane at the end of his deliveries, like, <laughs> you, like Tottenham would be lethal, like, because yeah. they have a very good, support and cast like along with them too and a, a, a strong squad and you know Levy might say listen Mourinho here's 200 million off you go like and then you'll be talking about okay give them three years and they could be challenging because as we've seen with Liverpool like they've built a solid team but they've Klopp has done it over years it hasn't just been a one year thing where he's come in and won him a trophy like Pep did you know spending all the money like yeah. it's 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 doable it's very doable if you've got the money and you've got the the right, you know, and Tottenham have, and Tottenham have those pieces, like the main pieces in place already, you know, so, it'd be like, somebody, coming into United, back in like, 2005 or six and having Van Nistelrooy up front, do you know what I mean, and being like, okay, well he's going to get you 25 goals a season anyway, don't worry about goals, okay, grand, let me buy a back, let me buy, a Patrice Evra, let me buy a Vidic, let me buy a, do you know what I mean, and go from there, and, um, but yeah man, one, uh, one more final thought. I'll let you finish off with the final this thought. Was, this is this was a this is a, an unrelated topic that we <laughs> had prepared for. Um, thoughts on Zlatan Ibrahimovic's next potential move? God, that's even I can't even. Alleged, allegedly, and uh, uh, at the time of recording, he's been offered an eighteen-month deal uh, worth six million pounds to go to uh, AC Milan. Ooh, fuck! Jesus, that would be massive, wouldn't it? Well, but, yes, but. It's uh, it's Latan. Yeah. He's like forty eight or whatever. That he's hardly going to go to. He's hardly going to go to AC Milan because like they're not going to win a Serie A when Juventus are there. <laughs> like no, he, but that's I don't I don't think that's their I don't think a swan, that's swan, a swan song for him. Well, yeah, because one he absolutely loves Milan. Yeah. And two. Uh, you know he could sign off and go. Do you know what I conquered again because yeah. I got him Champions League football. Yeah, that would be a good way to go out, wouldn't it? Yeah, because then you can go, right, I've got Champions League football because uh, Pytex goals have kind of dried up a little bit. Um, granted, he obviously had a really good start when he got there. I'm telling you, he's like a football correspondent. Um, <laughs> You're doing Pytex, a roundup of Europe at the moment yeah, here. but like Py- Pytex goals kind of dried up a little bit and then obviously they've, they've not really got anybody to kind of really latch on to. Yeah. So if they end up bringing Zlatan in, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him rock up there. Um, I heard because... he was going back. There wasn't there rumours he was going back to La, La Liga, though. Yeah. Wasn't that the original? That yeah, he came out with that, oh, work, you know, Spain, I'm coming back. And it's, I think that was a bit of a smoke screen. Okay. Because I think that was to kind of get people to go, hey, actually, we definitely need him back. Yeah. Because to be fair, you know, if AC need a striker, and, uh, you know, I know that some people might be like, yeah, but he's Latin, he's sick, he'll do all this stuff. It's like... If you'd watched his performances in MLS, uh, granted he's still strong as a freaking ox, yeah. but he's like he's a slow forward now. Yeah, he's like, the game's moved on from his kind of likes, really, hasn't yeah. it? You know, it's all about but, more but mobility you, now. Yeah, but if you park him in the box, a la Peter Crouch. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Hey, 
Hey, you, you want him all day. Um, I love him back at United, to be honest with you. Because he's well, like he he's proven kissy, goals. He made, like He made kissy faces at United, didn't he? Yeah, he was talking about it and flirting with us. But I don't know. He'd have to be a brave man to come back now. Yeah. Although we're not doing too badly at the moment. I think there's hope for us yet. But um yeah, man. That's pretty much it. That's been one of our one of our, our, our better conversations. I think we should make in real real life football a better like a, a bit of a part of the podcast every now and again as well because yeah. like we all love football. We all love like the gossip of rumors of transfers and players and everything and I think this year is exciting with the Champions League and there's some you know, there's some really good teams out there nowadays, and obviously Liverpool are high flying at the moment, which is, which is hard for me United fans' point of view because everywhere I look when you're out watching a match, it seems to be a Liverpool fan now because you know they're on top. But <laughs> at the same time, we enjoyed that for a, a like I enjoyed that when I was growing up. So as, um, as I saw, as I saw from a show on the kickoff when uh, somebody was talking to a Man United fan uh, who was a Chelsea fan, he was just like, you've had this coming. You ruined a lot of our childhoods. Yeah, definitely. And to be fair, definitely. And to be fair I grew up absolutely despising United. <laughs> but, but, but when you look back on it, like historically, although I grew up absolutely hating them because they constantly would kick the hell out of Villa and you poached Dwight York, right? Oh yeah, beast. Yeah, yeah who's absolute we did. beast. Yeah, right. But, when you then look back romantically at, at Fergie and how Fergie conducted himself, and you look at the calibre of managers that you've got floating around at the moment, you're kind of like, I'd really kill for Fergie or Arsene Wenger. Yeah, like, uh, like, definitely, yeah. Like prime Arsene Wenger, I would I would kill for. Like, yeah, or for Yara Keane. And, do you know, yeah. those types of battles before where you, or you had those types of players and that type of football, it's It's you know, a little it's bit changed. sanitized. Yeah, it is, it is. But it's like, do you know when you're younger and you're kind of always... You're like you're sitting down with your with your old man, and you're thinking like he's like, oh, these 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 Ronaldo, Ronaldo. <laughs> like he used my my old lad. Now he used, uh he hated Ronaldo like Cristiano Ronaldo. He just hated him when I was growing up. You know, when I was a teenager, and you'd be wearing the United shirt down to training with Ronaldo in the back, and like you know, I that even had I even had an earring. I got an earring because I wanted to be like Ronaldo, but. <laughs> Like he was hate Ronaldo. He's like he's always diving and all this and oh back in back now when I'd be watching Johnny Giles and fucking oh, like do you know what I mean? And they would have thought that they were the best players ever. And we had Zidane, we had Figo, we had Ronaldo, Carlos, Beckham. Like we were very lucky in who we've had. Yeah. Like yeah. now we're talking like that and we're like, Oh, it's not the same. Remember with Vieira <laughs> and Ray Keane and yeah. Dwight remember York Keane, and Remember when Keane was gonna break Vieira's neck yeah. at all? <laughs> and anyone like 18 or under watching this is like ah oh, like you know there's no way that Roy Keane was as good as I don't know insert yeah. like Fabinho or, the, or yeah, do you know what I mean the, like it's just yeah, it goes yeah, in yeah. swings and roundabouts like I've I, I had a I had a guy at work and I'll, I'll leave you on this I had a guy who when I explained to him what happened at, I had to explain to him what happened at France 98 and that made not only did that make me feel old but I also had to explain to him how good Michael Owen's goal was at France 98 yeah that's how bad it was. Remember when he was burst like, onto the scene? Him. Oh my god, he was when he absolutely crazy. destroyed Roberto Ayala. Like, yeah. just nothing. Literally, one of the best goals I've ever seen, like live. And Beckham Mental. getting sent off, and yeah, Beckham getting sent off, and Batty <sighs> missing the penalty. Yeah, that was a cra- That was a brilliant tournament. That was that. Right, right of course it was. Yeah, and two thousand and two was excellent as well. I really enjoyed two thousand and two actually as well. Wasn't that wasn't that Brazil. the one where uh, Ireland, Ireland didn't you guys get yeah like a really, we we got knocked you out got a really plucky draw against we, Germany I thought we got knocked out against uh, yeah Robbie Keane scored yeah. and we we um we got knocked out against I think we got knocked out against Spain actually was it on penos I think it was, it was penos. penos it was a penos that was the that, that was the infamous Saipan where Roy Keane and Mick McCarthy yes. had the big the big row and ah <laughs> yeah. oh, that was I definitely think we would have I definitely think we would have beaten Spain. I hope Carrasco isn't listening now or any of the Spanish guys, but <laughs> I definitely think we would have beaten Spain that year if we had Kino because that was a savage little team. Like, yeah. like we were, we were playing, like, I was actually only talking about this with my cousin the other day. When you look back at it, like, we just had a really, like, Ireland had some really good players that you don't really think of when you're talking about, oh, like the best in the world or 
Like, but you're talking about Denny Irwin. Like, Denny Irwin was probably one of the best left backs ever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He was. He look at his pocket, stats. He would uh, pocket people. He would. He was unreal. Like defensively and going forward, penalty taker, free kick taker. Then you had obviously oh. Roy Keane and Richard Dawn and. Oh, who was your Who was your free kick specialist? You used to play for Ian Hart. Um, that's him. Oh, Ian Hart. Unreal. Yeah. Then he was right back, like wasn't he? So, and yeah. we had like what you call him, Stephen Carr, Steve Finn, and then came through. Yep. Damien Duff you know won, oh, like won so Duffin. much with Chelsea Do you know like there was Robbie Keane one of the best strikers in the world at, at one time or in the top it's 10 like, anyway I, yeah yeah when you have to and again uh, and again to, to younger viewers we have to explain that Robbie Keane once played for Inter Milan yeah just just to put that out there it was crazy <laughs> Crazy times, it but I, crazy. I, I again, I, I think we can certainly revisit historic parts in history. I think, <laughs> that, I think that should be a part. We need to get Shales on the next time too. Yeah, because he lapped that up. Historic, historic tournaments and talking about them. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's where we need to go. Next. I think that'll be more for us than anybody else listening. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> pure, pure, a pure vanity, <laughs> the best kind. But <laughs> um, yeah, all right, boys, we'll leave it there. Enjoyed that one, and I hope you did too. I will uh, I will say my good looks with that. We'll hopefully be back with episode 5 sooner than we had episode 3 and the gap between 3 and 4, but we won't make any promises at the moment, but we are quite busy still editing, imagine, and all that sort of stuff, but uh, yeah. we'll try and make it a bit more regular, Weza, because um, yep. it's usually... It's usually something that we do both enjoy, like so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Just make it the time, man. But uh, yeah, I will leave it at that, lads. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and uh, subscribe on YouTube if you're listening or on SoundCloud or oh, uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, SoundCloud um, and iTunes as well. And uh, yeah, get in touch with us on Twitter as well at Pez Universe or at WizFC at the Midnight Kid. And that is it, man. I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. So peace out, Wizza. See you in a bit, guys. Take care, boys. I always give you the last word, you know that? Yeah, you. We're like the an- ant and deck. I always just <laughs> like, I don't know if I ant or deck, but I always let you lead out. Anyway, good luck. <laughs>